guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're going to go after a landmark piece of legislation in this video lecture. That would be the Sherman Antitrust Act, baby. You need to know it. It's going to be on the exam, or it's going to be on the exam of life. Either way, where attention goes, energy flows, guys. Give me a little bit of the attention, and we'll do a little bit of the learning on the internet. So here we go. So a little bit of context, you have to kind of go back into the 19th century to really understand that uh, we talk about laissez-faire economics and during the industrial age that the government is basically kind of taking a hands-off approach to big business and we see rapid industrialization and rapid growth of corporations. You also have to realize that's not completely true because we also have tons of subsidies that the government is kind of handing out to big business. So that's kind of like the artificial hand of the government interfering with market forces. But whether you blame laissez-faire or government interference, by the 1870s and 80s we see huge monopolies growing into to these new organizations called trusts that are really beginning to hijack the marketplace and they're beginning to use their enormous power to squash competition and competition is like the WD-40 of capitalism when you have competition um, in theory you have lower prices and better products so by the 1870s and the 1880s especially farmers are seeing kind of the brutal effects of the monopolization of the railroads right farmers gotta make a living baby and the railroads are overcharging them and they're demanding some type of a piece of legislation to deal with that. So in 1890, uh, public pressure results in the passage of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Check out the words. Every contract, a combination in the form of trust or otherwise, or conspiracy in restraint of trade, or commerce amongst the several states or with foreign nations, is declared to be illegal. So there you go. We also have a section two that kind of makes it a felony to engage in this practice. But basically what we're talking about is that if you have some type of monopoly or a trust or a cartel or a combination of business practices that is getting in the way of competition fairly being able to compete with you as a competitor. For instance, you're uh, you know fluctuating the price in order to kill you know a smaller business, or you're getting in the way of trade and you're only um, allowing partners to trade with you and nobody else. If you're doing these types of things and artificially affecting the marketplace by doing that to kill your competition, that ain't gonna happen anymore. That's the idea. In a sense, the Sherman Antitrust Act is like the government having a stick, and if you have this illegal monopoly because interstate trade is being uh, interfered with because of your you know manipulation or your mafia techniques then bang, 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 bang. the idea is that the government should be able to break you up like a Kit Kat bar in order to create that WD-40 of competition. So that's the concept, but that's not exactly what happened right away. In fact, uh, it's signed into law in 1890 by Benjamin Harrison, President Harrison. William McKinley's coming into office, I'm a Republican, um, and it, it flies through the House. I think it's like 242 to zero. Um, 42 to 1 or something like that in the Senate. It's really, really a popular piece of legislation. Um, but it's not enacted that way. In fact, for a decade or so, it was used against unions. Yeah, the workers, not the big business. Because uh, the government saw unions as kind of like an illegal you know, f uh, combination of uh, organizations that were interfering with interstate trade. Therefore, they were the ones that were guilty and they were the ones that were being declared illegal and being broken up. There's also the theory that the Republican administrations were really interested in keeping a high price in order for corporate profits to keep coming in. So they would give the Sherman Antitrust Act, you know, kind of its name and pass that piece of legislation, but one of William McKinley's first act was to have these kind of huge tariffs, which protects us from foreign competition. So at the same time, we could have high prices, but we were satisfying that public need for some type of governmental action. So basically, uh, William McKinley, of course, is assassinated in 1901 in uh, my hometown of Buffalo, New York, and now you have a different type of Republican on the block, and that would be Teddy Roosevelt. And Teddy Roosevelt is a progressive Republican. I'm not flapping my words. I'm not flappy birds, right? I'm going from a laissez-faire economic philosophy, at least in theory, to one of regulation and progression to kind of push society forward through government action. The concept is that um, by using the Sherman Antitrust Act, and um, Teddy Roosevelt first used it against the Northern Securities Railroad Trust, which was basically controlling the railroads in order to get that broken up. And in 1904, the Supreme Court reversed precedent and allowed for the Sherman Antitrust Act to be used to break up monopolies and trusts. 
Remember that the federal government is using its Interstate Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, baby, in order to constitutionally rationalize the Sherman Antitrust Act. And now that's in the government's back pocket. Now, are there people that are against the Sherman Antitrust Act? Certainly. Certainly they believe um, perhaps that, you know, this is a natural occurrence in capitalism, that you're going to get monopolies and trust because they're innovative and because they deserve that share of the market. And that when the government's interfering by trying to break up corporations, and in fact, it's helping inefficient competition get ahead. And of course, the other side is you need that government hand of regulation in order to keep the marketplace fair so competition uh, can occur. Um, but Either way, you can fall wherever you want, baby. I just want you to get that idea down that it's an important piece of legislation because it really represents one of the first times that the United States federal government is in fact regulating business in order for the public good. So there you go, guys. Click my face and check out some Hip Hughes history on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and check out. We have more than 200 videos. You're gonna throw your brain like 10 times its size. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time when we do the teaching on the YouTube. You see that? Of course not, because I'm a ninja.